I'm going to do a two-point perspective drawing to follow on from any one-point perspective drawing. And at first glance, it seems a little bit more complicated, but it's it's another one of those processes where if you follow the system and you trust the drawing method, then your product will probably turn out okay. Now, I'm not going to use tons of measurements today. We're going to we're going to do a little bit of estimating, but I'm going to give you three measurements to start with, uh, which you need to use a, a, a proper measurements for, because otherwise the whole thing will come out looking pretty wonky. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move that drawing out of the way now, and we're going to construct, and we're going to start with two vanishing points, one on either side of the page, and we're then going to measure along the bottom to give us our starting corner. The other measurement that we'll probably do in a minute will be here and here. I know you won't be able to see this drawing really, but that's going to give us our front corner. And actually with two point perspective, knowing where your front corner is is actually quite a useful um, reference for, for the next bits of your drawing. So in a minute, we're going to be doing two measurements down the left and right hand side of the page. We're then going to measure along the bottom. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this to 20 minutes. Remember, you can pause it and uh, do each stage one bit at a time. I've seen some really nice drawings that students have done. So I know you're up to this. We've just got to make sure that we kind of do it in reasonably quick order. So I'm using a steel rule and I'm measuring down 50 millimeters on the left, five centimeters, and I'm measuring down 50 millimeters on the right. Okay, so those are, if you remember on our last drawing, we did vanishing points. That's now my, I'm going to call that one VP1 and that one VP2, vanishing point one and vanishing point two. The next measurement that we were going to do to get us started was from the bottom left hand corner all the way along to 130 millimeters. Now, in reality, that's a, that's a guessed number because it's me following my sketch. But for us to be able to follow along a little bit, it's quite important that you try and um, try and do that. Now, you could, if you wanted your lines to go vertically up your page, you could do another measurement at the top, 130. Um, but actually, all we need to do is to plot vertically up a little bit. So if you remember quite often, a bit of a glare on that, um, quite often what we do with these sorts of drawings, we create construction lines, so we draw quite lightly at first, and then that saves rubbing out and it saves confusion. So the idea is that you push as lightly as you possibly can, and then you measure the, the finished uh, line onto it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up here lightly. Okay, now if you look at where I've drawn, just move that out of the way, you'll be able to see it. That I've drawn that a bit darker than I would normally do with it, so that you can see it. Um, I haven't done any measuring on that because that's my starting point. I'll then measure on it. So VP1 was 50 millimeters down. VP2, 50 millimeters down. And then that next line is 130. This is on an A4 page. So from left to right, 130. Not quite in the middle. As I say, it was. I've taken that measurement from a sketch. So I'll give you a minute to get that done. Pause it if you need to. So if we look at our next two measurements, we were coming up by one centimetre off the bottom of the page. And then I'm going to take this measurement on my original drawing there at 70 millimetres. I'm sorry I'm using this steel rule. It's giving you a bit of glare, but I actually I did go looking for a plastic um, ruler and couldn't find one today. So that's our front corner of the front leg, and I'm going to now darken it in. If you hear me say keeper, it's a habit I've got. The lines are construction lines and what I call keepers, the ones that are going to stay on the drawing. Okay, that's not a bad start. So what we're going to do now, and this is if you're drawing a cube in, in two-point perspective, this is also um, the way you do it. You've got your front corner. You're going to go to each of your two vanishing points using your ruler using your, in my case this horrible shiny steel rule here we go now again these are really light lines and you make sure remember i was talking to you last time about errors it's about not getting precisely to your vanishing point and that's where things start to go wrong sharp pencil go to your vanishing point 
Right, you can see that. I'll do the same on the other side now. Light lines, much lighter than mine, please. Right, so those are our construction lines. Remember, construction is another word for building. So I always think of this, we're building a drawing up and our construction lines are part of that process. Now, we're going to plot the front of our chair facing in this direction and we're going to put the back of our chair up in this direction. So when we're doing these measurements, we're going to start coming along here. Now, I'm going to just guess this. All right, that looks about right to me there. Let's have a, I'm going to give you a measurement. If you want a measurement, I'll do it. Um, interestingly, that's, that's also 70. And I'm going to draw a line straight up. Now, I'm being quite careful to go vertically up my page. You could do this with a set square. That would be a really handy thing to do, but that's not the purpose of this because you might not have one. So what I do sometimes do is use the end of my rule up against the edge of a page to help guide me. But it's not really, really important. What I think is important for you guys, remember we've talked about parallel before, get your, on a, on a face, on an object where there's vertical angles, get them parallel because the vertical in two-point perspective remains vertical. Right, so that was 70. If you wanted to measure that one, I'm going to estimate this and then we'll measure it. Right, interestingly, 80. And I'm going to draw straight up. So again, I'm making sure that I'm parallel with that front corner. So if we've got that front corner set up right, then we're on to something. Now, if I was just doing a cube, I would stop there. I'm actually going to draw the back of a chair and I'm going to go quite high. I'm going to go almost to the top of the page. So that line is going to go almost to the top. I'm going to just darken that in. Right, now that line's actually a keeper. I'm going to keep that in. Now what you're going to notice, when we do this drawing, we have some things that we're looking down on and some things we're looking up at according to where you are on the eye level line. But we'll, we'll not worry too much about that at the moment. So here's our front corner. We've plotted back to VP2 and VP1. I'm now going to do a plot forward from VP1 through the top of this. Okay, so I'm projecting forward with a construction line. Okay, and this is going to give me the thickness of the chair. Doesn't matter if you go off the edge of the page, that's absolutely fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plot the side elevation of the chair. And that's going to give us, just put my little sketchy one in front of you there, you might be able to see it. That's going to give us our side, which we'll then use to create quite a lot of the rest of the chair. So I'm going to come from this point. I'm going to actually do a construction line all the way down because that's one back leg on our beautiful IKEA chair. I'm going to just get it so that I can see that back line because I want it to be parallel with that choose my thickness so again i'm not measuring it it's about 10 12 mil isn't it okay i'm checking for parallel here and i'm then going to draw a construction line down so a construction line remember is nice and light i'm drawing reasonably dark so that you can see it okay so that's going to form a leg i'm going to estimate another leg that one's a bit smaller than this one here, that distance. It's a bit of a guess. I could do all sorts of plotting for space, but I'm not going to do that. So if you want to, approximately the same size will be all right. In actual fact, that should be a little bit narrower. And I'm now going to plot only inside this section. There's my vertical line. Here's my parallel line. There's a construction line. And this is where your eyes are going to start going a bit boggly, isn't it? Where you've got lots of lines going all over the place. So here's our back edge. That's our front corner. This is going to be the top of the seat. In a minute, that'll be the top of the seat. So we've given it two 
leg thicknesses here. So I'm going to just plot in where I want the top of my leg to be. Oh, sorry, the, the bottom of the seat, I suppose. Now, you'll have to take my word for it on this one because it'll make sense in a second. I'm going to come down about the same distance. It doesn't matter. It's not critical. And I'm going to go to that vanishing point. Okay, so I've plotted through. Now, that line in between there and there, I just pushed a little bit dark because I want that to be my keeper. That's the line that's going to stay. So if you've drawn it lightly all the way through, you can go back onto that and just darken that in, in between. And this edge here and this edge here are also my keepers. So I'm going to go darken those in. Don't be tempted to darken them in freehand because what you'll do is you'll make a mess. Here's a potential error. We're only going to be blocking on our ends. We're not continuing through here. We're just blocking the ends. And then we're getting quite close to completing our side elevation of our chair. So I'm just going to darken in what I'm keeping. So again, I'm just making sure that I'm vertical in a straight line. Things are lined up where they're meant to be. Okay. Now, you should be able to see now the side profile coming into place. And isn't it interesting, if you look at the distance between here and here, and here and here, I can visually see that that's actually quite a lot narrower. Looks pretty good. Because remember, in perspective, things get smaller as they get further away. So let's now turn this into um, the next bit of... Let's do this top plane here and the back plane there. So we've got a change of direction and a change of direction. We already go off to this vanishing point and that vanishing point, which means that each of those two can realistically only go to that vanishing point. So we'll join those up with the construction line. I'm sorry about this ruler. I can see how much glare it's causing. I'm actually working in a dark room. The only light source is straight above me. So it's probably making it even worse. I'm doing this quite late at night. I'll do my next one in daylight with a proper ruler, I promise. Okay, so I've gone from there to that vanishing point and from there to that vanishing point to VP2. Okay, now we're going to plot this front corner to make our surface of our seat. We're not going to go over there. We've already got a line there. So we're going to take that over there. Now, I'm going to stop it when I reach the next line. I'm not going to continue all the way to my vanishing point. But what I'll do, just to kind of remind you, I'll draw a line in behind the chair. You don't have to, because it actually stops there. <laughs> right on my glare. I'll just carry that on a little bit. Okay, so I've just drawn this line, and I've carried it on there just for the sake of the drawing you could have if you're drawing really nice construction lines you could actually have plotted it all the way through I knew where it was going so I stopped it all right hopefully you can start to see the chair appear we've got one more line to do to get our main form done so there's my back and the leg there's my top so I need to make the rest of this back at the moment the back doesn't exist so I'm gonna to have to do a line here all right now it's a vertical line so our vertical stay vertical and it changes angle in the same way as this one changes angle. So that's my point. I can just check I'm running parallel with this and draw that line in. Right now, beautiful chair. Now you can see at this point we're looking up at it and at this point we're looking down at it. So that's our eye level line is here. If you like that sort of thing. I'm going to just darken in that line there because that's another keeper. Right, now, we could leave it at that and think that's pretty good, but actually what we need to do next is to think about the legs. So I'm going to do a little bit of plotting on the front edge, and we're going to use that to help us work out where our back edge goes. 
because these are going to be slightly smaller than these ones. So first thing we're going to do is going to work out our seat thickness. Now, hopefully you can begin to think, I know how I'm going to do that because we're going to be able to use existing drawings. Right, so let's do it. I'm going to take this line here, that's, that's my thickness. I'm going to take that line there and I'm going to project forward to that point. Don't draw that dot. Right, project forward to that. And then I can take that measurement up to that vanishing point. Now, this is a construction line. So just be, be light with it. Okay, so now that is going to be where my seat thickness comes. Now, again, this is where we're going to do a little bit of estimating. I'm not going to measure it. I'm going to do that there. And I'm going to make the distance here slightly narrower, only marginally though. So in the same way as we've got this bottom here and here, we're now going to have this piece here and that piece there. And to make these legs, they're vertical, which means that we're going to plot up vertically there. Let's do it. I'll come this way. So it's there. Making sure I'm parallel with that. It's amazing how important parallel and vertical is in perspective. Things look really wonky if you don't get that right. So just just spend a moment. Can I draw that lightly? Yeah. Spend a moment getting that right so that the whole drawing doesn't get spoiled. Okay, and then like I've got here, this piece in between is my keeper. Right, now again, you could go, okay, brilliant, I've got a chair there. We're actually missing um, one, two, three lines at the very least. We've got to give this leg a thickness like this one. We have to give this a thickness and we're gonna go, remember, we can't go to that vanishing point there, we've already been there, which means that we're gonna be heading in that direction there. So let's get that plotted on. Now I'm gonna just, take it up to the next bit you could draw all the way through but that saves a bit of rubbing out so that's that line there it does go to the vanishing point don't be tempted to go oh, I know what I'm doing I just draw a line it's got to go to that vanishing point okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to use a known point to show me what that thickness should be okay so I'm going to use that point there that's the thickness of the legs. So I can plot it. Now again, I'm not gonna go that way. I've already been there. So it's got to be in that direction. So if I line it up with the vanishing point carefully, bring it onto that point. Now I'm not gonna draw through the leg. I'm gonna just plot here. And you'll see what I've done. I've just made a little dot where it crosses I've made that mark there. I'll darken it in. You don't need to do these dark marks that I'm making. So we'd already done that plot there. To work out the thickness, I plotted back to the vanishing point. But all I actually wanted to know was where that line crossed. Because remember, if it's a leg, it's going straight up, isn't it? So vertical and vertical. That one. That is our equivalent here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just darken that bottom line in just to help us see our form appear. Nice and dark. Right, so what's missing? Can you see it? It's this back leg here. We're missing that part. So we can literally plot Remember, we're looking at that thickness. We're going to plot it backwards. That's going to give us part of our measurement. And we're going to go from here to that, that to VP2, slid across. We're going from there to VP2 to give us the other part. So we've got a reference point there and a reference point there. Where those two cross is the point where our leg corner is. So I'm going to plot back. A little line so from there 
I only needed that bit, so I haven't bothered drawing the rest of it. And from there, now I got that mark there. I'm going to draw this one in quite dark because I know it's going to stay there. You could have just made that cross and then joined it up. So there's the bottom of the leg. Now we know that the legs are vertical. So I'm going to just check my verticals are okay. Right. What's missing? Anything? We don't see that back leg, so that's correct. Got our angles right, because they're going off to our vanishing point. So if any of yours are looking a bit wonky, I wonder how many of you have drawn this bit coming off here or that bit going off at that angle. Verticals in this drawing should be vertical. All of your lines, because we're we're choosing this beautiful Ikea chair, should be off to vanishing points and nice and precise. There shouldn't be anything that crosses unnecessarily. Okay, so that's the drawing basically done. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just whiz through a little bit of coloring. Um, hopefully I've got some slightly better coloring pencils than yesterday. So I'm gonna give it a go. And so if you remember, we tend to have the top area where, it's, where the light bulb is is going to be um, lightest underneath and facing in this direction I tend to do darkest all right so what I'm going to do I'm going to just do my um, hopefully reasonably speedy coloring it's quite a big drawing it's quite a lot of surface area to color so I'm going to go quite quickly and if you remember I tend to do it all one color first so that's going to end up being my lightest color Okay, so that side there is going to be my mid-tone. I can go quite quite dark with that. Now, I was scrabbling around for colouring pencils. I've got, a, I've got a really nice tin of colouring pencils somewhere. Um, and like I was saying, for about three or four pounds, you can get ones that will put down a really nice layer of colour. If you're trying to use ones that are really cheap, you've got to work really hard to get colour down. So for the sake of maybe a, an extra two pounds... Get them from WH Smith's instead of from the pound shop. It might make all the difference. There's nothing wrong with having cheap colouring pencils sometimes, but it means that for the sake of a little bit more, you get an awful lot bang for your buck. Actually, somewhere like the Works, um, well, there's quite a lot of shops, will sell half decent colouring pencils, and they'll last you for ages and ages and ages. Right, so this is my mid-tone now. I'm just looking at that in comparison to my lightest tone there in fact you know what i'm going to make this my mid tone just because the amount of coloring in i'm going to do so i'll go over this to get it the same as that tone often i do that as my darkest one but i'll do it this way i am being a little bit speedy than i would like because i want to get it done take a bit of care away with this don't don't rush this because you can ruin a really nice precise drawing I've got a few students in some of my classes who absolutely hate colouring in because they don't think it makes the drawing look any good. But as an industrial designer, a product designer, a design engineer, sometimes you've just got to communicate well. And that does mean that often you're representing the materials using colour, tone, trying to put some texture down and stuff. Okay, so that's a mid-tone. I've got my light tone. I'm going to go over what was originally going to be my mid-tone. One more hit. Pushing a bit harder. Okay, quite dark. So I'm actually struggling a little bit. These, this is obviously quite a, quite a budget pencil because it isn't giving me that depth that a, that a better colouring pencil will do um, even though I've pushed quite hard there. I'm going to struggle with this next bit because actually what I want to do now, I'm going to give these bottom legs a reasonable going over 
and then particularly where they fall under the object under the rest of the shape going to darken that in so the challenge is have i got enough dark tone oomph the power of the dark side there we go just gives it a little bit of bit of welly doesn't it okay uh looks all right there's, there's some bits that i would go back over but i'm not going to spend time on it and then this is where i was saying to you about um putting a little bit of an additional color around it just to help lift it off your page um i did a horrible job the other day with a with a drawing pencil um now i could spend quite a long time constructing shadows and stuff here but but very often what all you need to do is to create enough of an impression of depth and lifting off the page um, my shadow is not even remotely accurate to the object here this is this is just about it's sort of style over function i suppose if you've been a bit critical just adds a bit of bit of depth to it now sometimes i'll even go so far as to do you know what i'm going to come up the back there's no way that shadow would be cast there but again i'm just looking at making my page look a bit impactful shelf shout remember make it stand out make someone want to look at it and then final bit there okay so in in sort of simple terms i mean again i'm looking at a, sh a shiny page there that's the other downside of some sometimes cheaper pencils um so that's two point perspective. Hopefully I've got in there in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, the, the task really is to see if you can duplicate that. And if you can duplicate that, um, possibly try doing your own shapes and maybe try making up some other bits of furniture that can go alongside it. Again, I'm sketching here. You need to be doing it properly. Um, maybe trying to put something else onto that drawing as well. That, that would be the next challenge and seeing if you can apply two point perspective. Okay, so hopefully you'll be okay with that. Good luck.